So the next presentation is uh, Bob and Alan from Reservoir Labs. That's it. Um, they, they've been working on the core bro a little bit, and they've went ahead and did some stuff with trying to deal with memory management in bro. It, it's very easy in bro to sort of kill your own memory by storing too much, loving the network too much, and keeping it for too long. So they were trying to address that, and they got in touch with us. And the, the changes they've done, they're contributing back, but we've uh, been unable to put them into 2.2 because it just is going to require a lot of evaluation and stuff. And so anyway, they're going to talk about what they did and their approach and things like that. Uh, so we're going to talk about, well, so I'm Alan. This is Bob, Alan Kamai, Bob Rosso from Reservoir Labs. Um, we, Reservoir Labs does quite a few things. We, we build compilers uh, for all sorts of weird machines. We have SAT solvers. Um, we have uh, Java JIT. Um, we do the source code checker. And we build bro boxes. So um, the bro box part is the part I'm going to talk about here. And as Seth, 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 Seth said, um, we've been looking at memory management for Bro, and that, that's that's where this, this talk is going to go. And that didn't work well. OK, so really short outline, motivation, implementation, and use model. So um, we like tables a lot. There's lots and lots of tables. Tables are good. Tables are easy. Tables are fun. Um, just a graph into bro source, there's 96 tables um, when I did this a couple of days ago in bro 2.2. Some of the tables have expires, um, which is good, meaning they won't grow forever and ever. Some of the tables don't have expires, and depending on what's in those tables, they will grow forever and ever. Um, and so this is what we've given a little bit of thought to. So, you know, too much table um, starts having cruft in the system. Um, you know, as, as you start collecting more and more stuff, you get more and more garbage, and pretty soon you have a little bit too much of it. And too much is not really a good thing. So what we really like to do um, is have the magic garbage collection fairy. And so, you know, Google image search is great. I, I, I didn't actually make this. I found this. Um, but you know, the, the ultimate thing to do is say, well, I don't want this data anymore. I'm not going to need this data anymore, and get rid of it. Um, doesn't quite work that way. So we have something that kind of gets a little closer to that. And actually, you can see up top, this is actually an ad for Listerine somehow. I'm not sure how the ma magic garbage collection fairy applies to Listerine, but it seems to. OK, so um, what we're going to want to do is um, find data in tables that's old, and old enough that we don't really care about it anymore, and then delete that data. It's broke, so based on some user policy. Um, we're going to want to do as much in script land as we can. Um, another thing as bro, we want to have as little impact on bro code, bro script line code, and bro code as possible, and we want to do it efficiently. Uh, this kind of goes back to the match fairy thing again too. Um, you know, there's there's a lot that we want to get done and a lot we want to do, and um, some of these things we were pretty good at, at figuring out how to do. Um, so what we really want is we want to say. Um, Remove the the oldest data in the tables um, when memory pressure increases. So if you have a system with one gigabyte versus a system with sixteen gigabyte versus a system with a terabyte of memory, um, it, it's different. And we want to bound this by the resources available in the system rather than some hard coded model. Um, and one way to do that is to look at um, least recently used data. So we can make the assumption um, for this particular policy that we're working on is that things that have been least recently used, well, by definition, are, are <coughs> oldest and, and are the things we don't care about as much. Um, and then we want to send some memory event 
that says, well, memory is getting low, resources are getting low, so shake out the tables and remove that old stuff. Um, and I'm going to concentrate in, in this part of the talk on the least recently used portion of it um, because that's the, the key underpinnings, the, the how to send the memory events and shake things out we're going to lead to a little bit later. So how do we do this? A um, couple of things we thought about. We could do it all in script land. Um, so we could write a set of scripts to, to help manage all this. Um, probably be cumbersome, probably won't have the greatest performance. Um, we could look at new built-in functions to do this. Um, we thought, well, maybe we could have a set of built-in functions to help you manage memory again. Um, still cumbersome. Um, built-in functions can be written in C, C code, so performance can be there, but not, not the easiest to use, not really the low impact thing that we wanted. Um, so then we started looking at new data types. All right, so we could create a new data type that if something is garbage collectible, um, then you just put it into this new data type and um, everything's great, except you gotta go change all the code to use it and no one wants to do that. Um, uh, each new release of Bro comes out. There's some code changes that are needed anyway, but we don't really want to say, got to change all your code to do this. So then we went, all right, well, why don't we just add a new attribute? So given a table, we add four extra characters to that table, and then that table becomes something that is garbage collectible. That seems like the right way to go. Four extra characters. Um, it's still making some changes into Bro, but it's fairly low impact. Um, doesn't really change, um, make big changes into the code. Is, is the reason you did that because you needed to store extra stake in the table internally? So it's yeah. not essentially turning on or off that extra Correct. stake that you stored? Yeah, yeah. So uh, Seth's question was, do we need to store some extra stake? And I'll, I'll you're a slide ahead. So I'm sorry. <laughs> As always, a, a slide ahead. Um, yeah, so basically, um, well, I'll, I'll get there in a second. So, so unlike a, a lot of other, other talks um, or today and for the next few days, um, we're going to talk about bro internals. We're going to talk about the C code. Um, we're not, we'll talk a little bit about using this inside bro, but we're, we're actually adding pieces to bro core itself. And, and it's really not so scary. Um, not so scary, a little scary. Uh, so it, it is well organized. Um, so if, if you guys haven't seen the code flowers, they're really, really cool. Um, so I, I have the URL down at the bottom for the, for the code flower. So this is Bro. Uh, it's probably that code flower is a few months old when I snapped it off of 2.2. .2. So the big green blob is the Bro core. Um, <coughs> All the analyzers are nicely packaged together. The files framework that, that Seth talked about, <laughs> yay, Robin. Um, the files <laughs> framework that, that, that Seth talked about are down at the bottom, bin pack, bro cuddle, and all, all this is in there. So if you work on a new source base, um, throw it into uh, code flowers, and it kind of gives you a high level organization of what the code base looks like. Anyway, so well organized. It's not like one giant ball. There's, individual balls. Um, it's pretty consistent. It's not too large. Uh, there's some comments in, in the code, but not a lot of internal documentation. But there's not a lot of bro documentation to begin with. Um, everything is, is comment-based. <laughs> um, so I, it's somewhat consistent with script land, um, that you got to read it and understand it, and then go back, because your understanding probably wasn't right in the first place. Um, <laughs> But I, you know, again, not so scary. Um, OK, so to answer the, the question, why did we do this? So the implementation plan for least recently used tables is we're going to keep a doubly linked list of pointers um, to table elements. And then we'll keep, um, we'll extend the table data structure and say, well, here's a pointer to the most recently used, and here's a pointer to the least recently used. And anytime something is accessed, we'll rearrange that list. So for example, 
if we go and access something in the table, then in our, um, our list that we're keeping alongside this table, we find that item. We keep a pointer to that item, too. And then as we access it, we just move it to the top. So every time we access something in a regular table, we change a couple of pointers in this other list that we're keeping um, and bubble it to the top. And as time moves by, as you access things in the table, we're keeping the most recently used at the top, the least recently used on the bottom. And if it comes time to do some sort of garbage collection, we just throw stuff off at the bottom of that list. And it's, it's pretty efficient. So the table data structure itself has two extra pointers. Um, the elements have a pointer to our element in our list. And then we do keep this other list of pointers, but still, it's a doubly linked list of pointers, not that much overhead in the big scheme of things. And it gives us a lot of nice properties. And from the bro script point of view, it's very efficient. You just decorate something with LRU. Um, so add LRU, MRU pointers to the table data structure. That seems like it should be pretty easy to do. Um, Every time there's an add or a delete or an access or, or an, an init, we're going to need to adjust the heads and tails on this table. Well, that's just some data structure and hooks. We're going to add some new attributes. So LRU is the one that we talked about. Um, and along with this, we decided, well, table size is a good one. Um, we'll talk about a little table size a little bit more later, but it's kind of a initial cut at, at a, a more full-blown policy-driven garbage collection. Today, um, every tables are pruned temporarily. So I could say, I want this table to, or the elements in this table to be around for a certain amount of time. And in our case, we're going to say, well, I want the elements in this table to grow to a certain length. I want to keep 1,000 elements. I want to keep a million elements. I want to keep 10 elements. And this lets us do that and say, and only keep the ones that are newest. And um, like any good data structure, we want to know when things go away. So when things get pruned, we have a drop func, like an expire func that gets called. Um, and we're also going to add some diffs for some functionality. So this is the whole plan. And I'll walk through within bro code what it takes to do something like this. And again, not so scary. So inside bro, we need to touch four different places. We need to add language constructs. We need to add our LRU and, and, and size um, decorators. Um, those are attributes. So we need to touch the attribute part of it. And then all the data types are in val.h and val.c. So we need, that's where we're going to do most of the editing. And um, diffs, bro.diff. So that's really three or four subsystems um, and really two C files. Um, adder and val. So this, to extend bro, at least extend something like this, um, not much that you need to do. So to start out with, um, the grammar. So in, in a compiler, um, you have a, a grammar. And traditionally, and bro uses it too, there's a lexer and a parser. Um, so flex and bison today, lex and yak years ago. In the future, who knows? Um, so lexical analysis and basically turning strings into tokens. So we have the string LRU or ampersand LRU, and that gets turned into some token. And then that gets parsed into some internal data structure. So the, we added three lines into scan.l to recognize our LRU, our size limit, our drop func. And then we added a corresponding six lines. Six, yeah, six lines into parse.y to say, if you see this token, then um, create a new attribute as part of bro. And then we've just extended the bro language. Um, so nine lines of code, and we've extended the bro language. So th that kind of goes into um, the bro is fairly well written. You know, there, there's been other systems I've worked on that takes a bit more to extend it. And, and so that part's good. Um, so 
once we have attributes, they kind of automatically work, um, which is another nice thing. Um, there's an enumerant in adder.h. We added the attributes to there. And then there's really nothing else that we needed to do. Um, we, when you add new attributes, they kind of get added everywhere. And then there's some type checking that you want to do. Um, LRU only applies to tables. So we have code that says, if this attribute comes in and it's not on a table, then give the user an error message, which is nice to do. Um, so that keeps things consistent. And that's what Bro does. You, know, you, you can add attributes to all sorts of things that don't make sense. And when you go to Bro and Bro, Bro will tell you about that. Well, when you add new things to Bro, you should try to be a good citizen. And you do the same thing. And that's what we've done. And again, it's just a, a few different places we have to touch to do this. Um, and the big chunk of, of the work in extending the tables is the, the actual code to do this. Um, tables are one of the more complex types. Um, there's, there's hashes and indices and references and, and things associated with the table. So um, there's a little bit of understanding of what a table is and how it works and, and reference counting and hashing. Um, so. Uh, extending other things might be a little easier. Uh, it took us a while to, to, to get things right. There was a, a bug in the reference counting that, that took us a, a little bit to, to work out. Um, we'll have to talk about that. We're still not sure it's right. Um, and then we add, you add hooks. So when there's an it, when there's a lookup, when there's a sign, when there's a root, we added a hook, uh, a hook and, and then our, our specific code for manipulating a doubly linked list. Um, and, and all the things that we need to do. So basically, the boilerplate for a lot of the, the, the code is table val is the internal table in, in Bro. And table val has a function called lookup that gets called every time you look up something in a table inside Bro. And what we did is, well, we went into that, that function and said, well, if our attribute is part of this table, then call our function too. And we have, have these, these two lines of code in a couple of different places. We have it in delete. We have it in insert. We have it in a few different places that say, if this is a, a LRU decorated table, then go do this other thing. Um, and that's basically all it was into um, extending the table for this functionality. The last part of it is built-in functions. Um, so built-in functions are the things that expose C code to Bro. And um, there, are, there is some documentation on built-in functions. I don't remember what it says. I haven't looked at it in a really long time. There is a, a built-in function compiler, um, a bifcl compiler, that takes C code, wraps the C code, and sends it off to script land. So if you're going to add um, a new built-in function, we added one called get LRU. Um, and it's a mixture of Roish stuff and C-ish stuff. Um, so anytime you use a function in Bro, um, there's some BIF that wraps that function. So most of the extensions to Bro um, that people would want to do would be possibly adding new BIFs. Some things like we're doing is extending the language itself. So when, when you're looking at something, you need to decide where that extension comes from. Is it a new BIF? Um, is it a new language extension? Or is it a combination of both? So um, the LR, LRU portion is implemented. We have some ideas on how to do more elaborate garbage collection. Bob will talk about that some. There's a GitHub branch. Um, Jordy did a lot of this work, um, Jordy Jarrell. So um, we have a, a Bro clone and uh, a GitHub branch for the LRU table. Um, probably after 2.2, we'll work on getting that merged in. Um, you know, we've been using it in-house on, on our R-Scope appliances. 
So um, it's stuff that, that, that is working and works well for the stuff we're, we're doing. And you play with it if you want to download it. And hopefully, next version of Rogue, um, we could talk more about how it's being used everywhere. Um, so Bob's going to talk more about how it all gets used. Hello? OK. Um, so I'm going to go back a little bit and talk about um, you know, why we want to do memory management in Rogue. Um, the simple answer is it's really easy to shoot yourself in the foot, um, especially when we're dealing in uh, large traffic flows. You know, if you are putting you know, a HTTP host inside of a table and never expiring it, you're going to end up running out of memory eventually. Um, so uh, I came up with a couple of reasons. Um, stability, security, uh, uh, scalability, and efficiency. Um, first, stability. Um, you want Bro to be able to do something predictable when and if it runs out of memory or when it comes close to running out of memory. You don't want it to run out of memory and just die. Um, security. Uh, Bro could be DOSed if you're storing too much information using your Bro scripts. So uh, let's say, for instance, you uh, had a large flood of traffic coming in, and you were storing an attribute from that traffic. Um, you could DOS your Bro instance by virtue of storing as much traffic as you were storing. Um, scalability, um, that's important because um, without knowing um, exactly what the you know, memory requirements are, um, you can't really predictably scale. Um, and efficiency, there are certain you know, data structures that can be implemented to increase the efficiency of Bro um, when you're doing interesting things on big tables. So uh, like I said, this is a, it's, it's kind of a big data challenge if you're looking at big pipes and uh, processing you know, a lot of data in Bro. So, um, you know, looking into the future, people are going to be using Bro for 20, you know, 40, 50, 100 gigabits. And um, I think using memory management in Bro will uh, you know, maybe take one piece uh, out of the puzzle for ways people can shoot themselves in the foot. So um, Alan touched on this real quick. Um, in, in Bro today, there are ways to uh, expire data out of a table. Um, these ways are all, um, you know, by time. So, you know, each one of these tables can be painted with an attribute like create expire or read expire, and uh, you know, you set an interval for when this data expires, and it will expire at that interval. Um, these work really great, um, but uh, they're still susceptible to, uh, you know, filling up your memory. So, uh, what we propose is that. Um, you set bounds on the memory that you use. So um, in our LRU table, there's an attribute uh, called size limit. And the size limit attribute um, essentially says, I can fill this many lines of a table before I want to expire the data. Um, and uh, in the future, I think we hope to be able to uh, set the memory bounds globally so that we can say, you know, Bro can use this much memory. And once it gets to this threshold, then we want to start expiring data off of certain tables. So um, the LRU table that we implemented, um, essentially, uh, it's it's based on this caching algorithm. So um, you know, if you think about um, the way you know computers keep things in memory, uh, you want to keep things in memory that are used now and expire things out of memory if you have to um, that are not. So um, new data comes in. Um, it goes in the most recently used uh, slot of your LRU table. And um, you know all the other data gets pushed down. Um, we set a size limit threshold um, so that um, at the end of the table, if something, um, you know, if we've gone beyond the, the bounds of the table, we can expire an element off of the table. So that's what you see here in the threshold. And it goes into the bit bucket at this point. Um, so I think that using these kind of data structures is really interesting. Um, so you can say things like, what are the last five URLs 
um, every source IP address is used. Um, and this, this kind of uh, gets to some of the points that like Ashish was talking about earlier with um, you know, keeping track of all of the MD5 sums that have been seen. You know, has this file been seen? Um, the way that he, he suggested implementing it was with a Bloom filter. Um, you can also use you know, an LRU table for the same thing. Um, you perhaps have uh, uh, more, it takes more memory, but it can also be used you know, with, with constraints. Um, so uh, I, I think the LRU table is you know, one of the first of these like, you know, memory efficient uh, data structures um, that will be implemented in Bro. Um, state information and tracking state is becoming increasingly more important in Bro. And um, it, it seems to me like uh, this, is, you know, this is just part of the evolution of you know, where, the bro, where Bro is coming. Seth, I'm sure you can talk more about that than I. Um, but um, Bloom filters are coming. That's going to be really awesome. Um, and I think that the LRU table and the way that we're dealing with these tables is kind of an alternative to that. Um, you know, a Bloom filter, you can never pull the data out of it. Um, something like an LRU table, you'd be able to put data in and pull it out. Um, of course, in the Bloom filter side, there's you know always some uncertainty as to whether or not you know, um, an item is inside of that data structure. Um, with this, um, there is uncertainty, but only based on the fact that you may have expired some elements. Um, so some other data structures that we've thought about uh, that would be very interesting are like uh, least um, Least, or least frequently used and most frequently used. Um, I, I think that something like uh, least frequently used and most frequently used um, could be used to create some, some more streaming analytics. So um, you know, if, if, for instance, you wanted to calculate um, you know, who the top URL was at all times and pull it out of that data structure, um, you could do that. Um, and you know, of course, these kind of things can inform Bro policy scripts to make um, better decisions. Um, so one thing that we haven't actually started on, but we've talked a lot about, is garbage collection. And this is where we take the, the ideas of the LRU table and move it to the next level, where we say um, we uh, can say that a, a, a table is garbage collectible and um, have Bro decide whether or not it's time to remove the cruft from the table. So um, the idea with garbage collection is that uh, we'd, we'd set memory bounds globally. And um, you know either all tables or some tables would get painted with this garbage collectible attribute. And they would also get a priority. Um, certain tables, um, you wouldn't really want to garbage collect. Um, you know Things like uh, the tables that track HTTP state you wouldn't want to garbage collect those before you garbage collect some of your more like uh, higher level bro policy scripts. Uh, things that are low level, you'd want to uh, set with a, a priority such that they don't get garbage collected, um, or at least not right away. Um, things with a uh, lower priority, maybe a policy script, they would get garbage collected first. Um, so essentially, what would happen is. Um, you know, as memory gets low and you know, you're reaching a point where Bro's going to run out of memory, it starts looking through um, all the scripts that are running and all the tables that are inside of those scripts and saying, um, are there attributes that I can expire out of here so I don't die? Um, and th and th that's the main idea here is that we want to avoid a crash. You know, these aren't things that we, these aren't decisions that really want to be made lightly. But uh, you know, in, in the face of a crash, that's, that's the kind of thing that we'd want to do. Um, so uh, the way that we've, we've discussed it is that you know, a memory event would happen um, you know, as, as um, you know, memory gets low. And it would give the user in script land the ability to decide um, what to do prior to the expiry function. Um, the way that we've thought about this is that um, the user would be able to determine what uh, function they use to um, prune out memory. So, uh, so far we've implemented LRU. Um, that might not be the right function to prune out memory. Uh, it could be, you know, it could be anything. Uh, so, eventually, uh, I, I think that that would be the way that that would work. 
So that's that's pretty much what we have on uh, memory management and garbage collection. Um, do you guys have any questions, Seth? Sure. Um, I, I'm, I'm not this big for shooting yourself in the foot. And that's something we actually try to provide. I, I love to provide people the ability to shoot themselves in the foot. But you're right. There, there is, there is memory footprint. There's some slight memory footprint overhead, um, but compared to a lot of other things we're trying to do, yeah. It, you know, it, as you said, everything's a trade-off. Yeah. Everything, everything is a trade-off. Everything, yeah. yeah. So we have the decoration. So use it yeah. where it's needed, and don't use it where it's not needed. And, and you know, the big use that, that we thought is, in some cases, you just want to keep the top 10 of things, or, or a very small amount of things for everything. And this is a really easy way. It's a convenient way of doing it, because it's not hard to do it by hand. Yeah. Um, but this is a convenient way by just decorating something, and say, I only want 10 of these things, or I only want 100 of these things. Yeah. Um, and it keeps it around. <laughs> and, it, and at the, the very far end is, um, for very very large tables that you know you could you could possibly keep a million items you do some calculations and keep a million items and that should be a few days worth of data but then once after that start printing it away and it becomes an automated way of, of doing that um, it's a, a little bit more convenient I think LRU is probably uh, uh, it's a good it's a good first first run at it, but perhaps it would be better to come up with some other things like, you know, Bruce most, that's quite a bit harder. yeah, and it is, it's quite a bit, uh, <laughs> you kind of tried it or something. <laughs> we haven't found a, the most efficient way of doing that well, just I, yet. I, I will say though that, that I'll be talking about this tomorrow, but the subsets, we actually are, we, we do probabilistic top 10 in two tables. Cool. I guess I just point out that uh, two two is going to have probabilistic top k in it, so there there are some things coming that that are going to make some of the stuff they talked about easier and, and memory efficient. It's probabilistic, so it could be wrong, but it's trade off, <laughs> continual right. trade off. Yeah, yeah, we we've, we've looked at how to do some uh, in, the, in the same sort of framework in adding some decorators to the existing data structures to do um, frequency counts and. It's harder, so we're doing this first, and and then we'll see where it goes. Talking with with the, the bro guys about doing the integration, what's the right way to, to to do this extension. So what we propose now, and what you actually will end up seeing in the bro tree, might look very different. It might look the same, um, but it's just an idea of the direction we're going with this. Robin, I think I'm closing a.
imposing a, a, a size limit on the table makes a lot of sense, basically, the, the LIU implementation. Um, my initial reaction to the garbage collection, like the last part of your talk, is a bit more reluctant, I have to say, because for two reasons. One is um, it's really hard in Broad to kind of attribute memory usage to a specific table because there are lots of dependencies <coughs> internally and, and this reference counting can kind of like hold the same element in multiple tables and it's hard to even measure the exact amount of bytes a single table needs in terms of, of memory storage. So uh, there are lo lot of there's a lot of fuzziness there. And the second thing is um, it sounds like with that strategy, you kind of create a global strategy of expiring state, which means that the de a decision on, like in one script, how to manage state there might impact um, when something is expired somewhere else. And that makes it kind of hard to track and understand the semantics of, 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 of your state, like, as a whole. Yeah, it, it could be glo So R Robin had two questions, one, ab one about um, that there's a lot of things that are intertwined um, that can cause problems and then it's it's also a global operation and and again because of the global operation you have issues with some local data knowing about other local data and there's two ways of, of looking at a, a garbage collection one of them is a, a global mechanism where there's a global view which doesn't really exist today um, and another one is, is just looking at it as a local operation where um, as memory gets low, there's a, a low memory event that gets sent out and uh, there's a default handler for all the tables to do something about low memory situations. So it allows, in, in a priority way, so it, it allows the tables to try to do something smart or allows the policies to dry, try to do something smart without the system going and hacking things away, which we don't really want. Now, the, the, the last thing we want to do is have the system go and hack things away. Um, when we get to a memory exhaustion state, if we're going to either hack something away or crash, maybe that's what we have to do. But what we'd really like to see is something more policy driven, where we give the policies the, the, the ability to say, hey, memory's running low. Um, here's the callback. Start doing something about it. Else <laughs> we might. Is that um, it's hard for one script to understand whether it should do something because it doesn't know whether there's something more important somewhere else or not. So, so you that makes it hard to kind of in the end understand what's going on. But I don't know. I mean, that's something to explore certainly. Yeah, and we, we, so obviously we haven't implemented it yet. I, w these are we've gone round and round a few different ways, and we understand exactly what you're talking about because we've looked at it. Um, and and so it, this is the first step and we can get this first step out there and people can play with this to try to look at different ways and different policies for garbage collection and we can play with it also and try to get the next step of something more more global to do it with. Anything else? Well, the, so the code is on GitHub. Um, yeah. Yeah. No documentation. It was just like bro. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> um, so uh, before we go, uh, we wrote some bro scripts and we want to share them with the community. So. Um, huh. We uh, have a page up on our website where we're going to be sharing the scripts. Um, most of them are going to be around uh, data exfiltration. Uh, the first one um, that we're releasing is one that um, just detects uploads after hours. So essentially you um, tell it what the business hours are of your institution and it will um, you know, look at um, how many bytes are sent and how many bytes are received. And tell you if it's an upload or not. So uh, over the next uh, month, two months, we're going to be uploading uh, probably two or three more. So um, keep your eye out. We'll be tweeting about it. So thank you. Thanks.